What's up guys, my name's Luke and, and welcome back to Motion and Design. So this is the second time I'm recording this because NVIDIA Capture just messed up the entire recording of two tutorials. But anyways, um, so in this two tutorials that will be coming out, um, we're going to be focusing in on particle infection. So they're going to be pretty simple tutorials to be honest, I mean, it's nothing really too crazy. But I haven't really seen any tutorials on particle infection and I thought we were able to create some like pretty cool results. So yeah, I thought I'd show you how I went about creating this and then also show you the lighting and texturing. If you guys are interested in the project files, they'll be up on my Patreon. But if not, a like and a subscribe does go a long way. But yeah, without any further ado, let's get into it. Cool, so let's start out with our emitter over here for our pyro. Let's set this to about 13 in the radiance. And let's go simulation and let's add a pyro emitter. Now we have fire. Cool. So let's go command D for now and let's increase our resolution. I'm going to set this to about 0.5 and now we have some smoke. So you guys can adjust this how you want. If you want more or bigger or change it up a bit. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'll leave the pyro stuff up to you. But uh, technically for the render that I did, I literally just use the defaults like as is right now. That's what I did. But I think you can get some better results and cooler results if you mess around with it a little bit more. We'll do a little bit more in the second tutorial. Just kind of like uh, messing around with Pyro and trying different effects. But for this tutorial, this is going to be perfect. Cool. So let's go and add our particles. Let's go emitter, basic emitter, set this to a Q. Let's set this to 5 by 300 by 300. So you obviously don't need to do exactly like this, but this is what I'm trying to do. So we're going to set this to shot and then let's increase this a bit and go into our properties and turn the speed off. So now when we press play, we should just have a bunch of particles. Cool. So if we want to have the smoke and vague these particles, it's going to be very complicated guys. So make sure you're watching closely. We're going to add a pyro advect and there we go. Thank you for coming to this tutorial. It was great cool so you'll see that now the particles are being advected but we have this issue over here where after a certain point they just go flying outwards so i am not too sure why this is happening but my theory for this is that if we turn off our particles over here you can see that after a certain point the smoke just disappears because it dissipates. So what I think is happening is that once that happens, it follows it perfectly up here. But then once there's no more um, information for the particles to grab the velocity from, it just takes that whatever that last velocity was and continues with that and then will continue taking that velocity forever. At least that's my reasoning behind why this is happening. So to fix this, it's such a simple thing. I tried a bunch of different things, but the solution was just to go over here into our density and turn off our dissipation. So now if we turn this off, you'll see that when you press play, the smoke will never disappear. It will stay nice and thick, which is exactly what we want. So now when we have our emitter over here, there will be constant velocity information for the particles to take. And now look, it follows it perfectly. Also, and there's a few ones that disappear, but I mean, let's go off, but who cares about those ones? Awesome. So let's go into our simulation here and set this to negative 300. Cool. So now we're just going to do some look dev. I mean, if you just want to know how to do pyro infection, that's pretty much it. The rest is just going to be a bunch of look dev with like lighting and texturing and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but yeah, let's continue. So I'm going to set this to negative 300 just so it moves a little bit slower because I like that. I'm going to set this to about 150 over here. And now let's go into our meter and let's get a lot more particles. So let's go over here and actually make this maybe, I think that's 2 million or 20 million. And now we have a lot more particles, but it looks very nice. And that's exactly what we want. So you can't really see it properly here, but if we start our red shift might oh, it won't be slow there we go and now look we have quite a lot of information over here or particles 
I might actually even add another zero when it comes to the rendering. But I think for now, this looks cool. Cool. So I think the next thing I want to do before we move on to the lighting and stuff is just go into our simulations modifier and select our color mapper. So let's take this and set this to velocity. And I want to set this to velocity Z and let's see what this looks like. Cool. So that's looking cool, but we're not really getting any blues over there. So let's just chop this down a little bit more. And now we have some more blues, which is cool. I mean, we don't really need that. It's more just so that we have like color information data when it comes to the texturing, if you want to add or change things. So I'm going to leave this for now. Let me see all this crash it. Let's find out. Actually, I'm not glad that is one thing I will give this new particle system is that it works really well, even with lots and lots of particles. The only place where it doesn't work well is when it comes to caching. When I cached my scene, I think it was 120 gigabytes, which is ridiculous. It needs some sort of like optimization, kind of like what Houdini or X particles has. But yeah, that's a max on problem over there. Cool. So let's set up a camera over here. I'm just going to set up something basic like, like this. Let's set our focal length to around like 50. Yep, I think that looks cool. Let's see how we're we looking in our viewport over here. Yeah, it's going to be a lot slower now that there's a lot more particles, but it'll look a lot nicer. When it decides to load. There we go. And yeah, look at that. We have a lot of detail and it looks really cool. Um, I actually think for the purpose of this, I'm just going to drop this down a bit just so that it's not slow. And then when it comes to the rendering stage, then we can bump this up a little bit more. Cool. Let's go over there. Now let's go and add a material onto our particle group. And let's also add a redshift object tag. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is so that I can add this optimized spheres. The only reason I'm doing that is just so that I can control the scale over here. You can control the scale in the radius over here, but because we're, these aren't really acting dynamically against each other, it doesn't really matter what the radius is because they're not really going to bounce off of each other. Cool. So let's go over here and let's search for color user data. Let's plug this into our color over here. And then set this to particle color. And now we should get the exact same colors. Cool. Now let's go up here and add a ramp. And let's choose a color. I'm going to make this the same as my render, which is like this orange. And then let's just clamp these values a little bit. Something that should be fine for now. Let's go redshift lights. Let's add a dome light. Let's go and add graph and let's just do the, the default gradient thing that we always do. Um, let's go to scene full key shader, plug this in here, 1024, 1024. We can obviously set that higher, but I don't really need it to be higher because it's literally only going to be for the background. Let's set this to be, Let's clamp these values a little bit and change this value to a nice orange. So like that. Uh, yeah, that should be fine for now. I think I'm going to reduce the amount that is going to be affecting the diffuse up here. And now let's go and add in a area light. So I'm just going to create a different perspective over here. Click in A so we can see our particles. And I'm just going to add a light over here. I'm going to add one where it's kind of like a back lighting like that. And then let's add another one. We kind of have this more forward facing. In my render, I think what I did was I added a gobo with like a bunch of like white and black lines. Just to create that kind of like stripy look. You don't have to do that, but you can do that. Or you could just add any type of gobo. But yeah. I think this is looking pretty cool. Uh, obviously, it's going to look a lot cooler when we have a lot more particles. So let's do that. 
Yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on the lighting and rendering because you guys can just download the project files and they're pretty simple, to be honest. The main thing is to show the effect over here. There we go. So now it's back and you can see we have a lot more detail in this. Uh, I think I don't like this background. It's too... It's too yellowy. I, I think it needs to be more orange. Uh, maybe like, like that, and then maybe even I mean, that's fine. I'll leave the texturing up to you guys. I mean, it's literally just changing the colors until it's something that you like. Uh, but I think this looks fine for now. I mean, we can do a basic tiny bit of correction over here just to make it a little bit more contrasty. Bump those highs. Bring those darks down a little bit or up. Something like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can see it makes a difference, but not too much of a difference. But yeah, and now, I mean, this can be the end. But I think for mine, I also added a, another camera. Let's go find a spot that looks kind of cool. Maybe like here. Let's rotate this 90 degrees. Uh, negative 90 degrees. And now we have a completely different look over here. Just add some like depth of field. But you would have to adjust the lighting, obviously. I just want to show you that, you know, you can get like a bunch of cool looks from this just by like changing up the camera angle and this is where having our uh color user data comes in quite useful because now we can get a lot more control over these particles just keep in mind that this is going to be applied to here so if you want a different look just change up the way that you're using the color map app change it to speed or age or distance traveled yeah mess around with it see what you guys can come up with but yeah pretty simple but i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and yeah if you guys are interested the project files will be up on patreon but yeah until next week peace